if you ever wanted to start your own top ranking Etsy store, but you only got $500 to spend. Well, you're in luck because I make $60,000 a month on Etsy selling dog collars. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step on how to start a successful Etsy shop with just $500. First calendar year, year we did three quarters of a million. How did you scale from a bedroom all the way to this business? Currently, we are the number one pet product in terms of daily sales. I don't like to print big rolls. I try to stay as lean as possible. How much does it cost to manufacture it? I don't have to have the inventory, so I print if it sells. This is a boss laser. It engraves all of our buckles, all of our tags, and that's the trick about why I decided to print my own fabric, because that reduces how much money you spend on advertisement. This is a basically a two needle sewing machine, so it sews the strap with uh, two needles at once. So you're telling me that you started off from a $100 sewing machine. Exactly. Walmart. Exactly. And I don't even have a dog. So that tells you that like anybody can start. And if you can reduce your price, you can improve your conversion rate, thus increasing your sales. Come here, boy. Vlad is going to share with us his business strategies, his marketing tools so that you can start your own Etsy store. Big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Vlad, tell me more about yourself. How did you start? How did you get to this point? Oh man, I was actually, uh, I did physical therapy as my nine to five, and I was kind of a sole provider, but that wasn't enough money to, to really sustain a you know, family at this time, because I was married, I had a kid, a one-year-old kid, and on the side, I started doing graphic design. And uh, a company reached out, good friends of mine, that actually ran a really successful Etsy shop, and they said, hey, why don't you design our product? And with my design skill, I kind of, I went into that, you know, into that world of Etsy, because I didn't know Etsy existed until they showed me, and those guys are brilliant, and so they showed, wow. they told, they, they pretty much taught me everything I know about Etsy, and understanding what knowledge I have with graphic design and how to apply that within to the market, I realized like, hey, why, why not start an Etsy shop myself? And sure enough, when I did start an Etsy shop, everything else was history. So how many years ago did this start? Oh, this is probably two and a half to three years ago, wow. but I, I haven't started my own Etsy shop until about a little over two years ago. Let's talk about the product. What are you doing and what's the top seller for you? Uh, so we sell dog collars. Essentially, our main thing is dog collars and leashes. So this is our biggest seller, okay, the peach okay. floral. It's, uh, people wow. go crazy for that. So This uh, is beautiful. And then we also do fully covered leashes too. So And people like the fact that they can match the collar with the leash. So, okay, um, this we, is awesome. We also do harnesses, uh, bandanas, and tags. So, but oh, like I no, said, our biggest sellers are collars, more this. specifically that design. So this design, how much does it cost to manufacture it? Yeah, so the buckle and the metal components cost about $3. The straps are pretty much free. I mean, I buy straps by large rolls, and so per collar, it's almost insignificant. Now the fabric and the ink is really the, um, where, where that starts to get a little bit more pricey, apart from the buckle, and it costs about $2 for the fabric and the ink to make the, the strap, and that's, I'm actually trying to reduce that cost as much as I can, wow. uh, but, but I can't do anything about the price of the buckle. And so if I'm selling a collar for about say tw uh, $20, it'll cost me about 10 to $11 to make the collar, okay. including labor and shipping. Let me, uh, let me show you around. Okay. Yeah, so over here we have our uh, sublimation printer. I just finished printing the designs. I don't like to print big rolls. I try to stay as lean as possible so we don't have the inventory. And wow. so whatever we're out of, I print. And then I come over here and I press with this uh, heat press. This is my beauty. I love wow. this machine. It Look presses this. fabric. It's a roll-to-roll -roll heat press. Um, it, uh, it can do a lot of uh, fabric, uh, transferring that ink onto fabric. And then with that fabric, we sew the dog collars. This is so cool. I'm so excited. I can't wait yeah. for you to share how yeah. everything all started. Yeah. No, this is, uh, this is, I love this, this is my passion, so. That's awesome. Where are you getting your supplies and where are the best deals? Yeah, so that's a good question. All my packaging and labels I get from a Uline. The nice thing about Uline is they do overnight shipping, which I love that because packaging, um, it, they, it's not that much per box, but the boxes are large, so I can't really buy up uh, in enough inventory to last me for a year because it'll take up the whole shop, so I wanna buy small amounts. Uh, for things like buckles that I use for every uh, collar or fabric, I have to buy it from China, which I, I buy enough inventory to use a forklift for that, so, so that's kinda how, I, and sometimes I go on Amazon to buy fa um, threads and um, things like that. Oh, wow, that's amazing. That makes sense. Well, take me through the process. Okay, so. 
I need to actually order some um, shipping labels uh, and envelopes right now. Okay. So I'd go on Uline, I would open up my account, and so let's go on Uline. On the order history, I already bought a lot of this stuff. And then I'm gonna buy a couple boxes of our larger envelopes, which is, um, I believe it's six by 10. So okay. we need two boxes of that. And I'll add it to cart, and well, after I add it to cart, I check out and, um, deliver to this address and then the process is pretty much done. Wow. So and they deliver it to my shop. I don't need to go anywhere. Um, I've taken care of my inventory. What has been the single most important factor of growing your business? There's a lot, but I would say production. If you can get your production right, you're gonna get your price right, you're gonna get scalability right. And I started obsessing over that from very early on. You don't have to have large equipment to do that, you just need to have a direction saying, I'm gonna work on production, I'm gonna work on reducing the cost, I'm gonna reduce, work on reducing the time it takes to produce this product. And if, if you're gonna take on that full on, you're gonna have much see much better results and it's gonna take a lot of work but that's that I would say is probably the most important thing all right so and I just got a shipment in so we can go ahead and pick that up oh. uh, it's outside okay sounds great so when you first started your Etsy shop what were your greatest challenges and what did you do to overcome them oh my greatest challenge was the fact that when a product goes say viral or it starts to sell really well and then jo Joanne runs out of fabric oh. it runs out of fabric and that's why I made the decision to print my fabric so I can put a limited amount I remember there was a time where it ran uh, ran out of some of my, one of my hottest product and so uh, I literally had to go to every Joann's throughout Washington to buy that fabric. I would go wow. from Seattle, Tacoma, and so oh, on and man. so on. Every single uh, uh, Joann's that w had that fabric, I would just buy it out. Uh -huh. And I'd go online, on Joann online, and I'd buy out anything that's available there. And so my greatest challenge was scalability after I wanted to transition away from Joann's. Okay. You said you started with $500. How can somebody be watching today and be like, I want to start this with $500? Yeah, for example, if you want to start off with 500 bucks, you get yourself a Cricut cutter, they're 200 bucks. You pick up some heat, uh, the vinyl uh, from Joann's, they have them. You can apply that to champagne glasses and start selling personalized champagne glasses for bridesmaids. Or like I said, you can get a heat apply for fabric. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a type of vinyl that you also cut and you can apply that with an iron. I mean, it's as simple as using your iron um, and so you can do 500 bucks. You can do a thousand bucks by getting, say, a sublimation printer and getting yourself for the sublimation printers go for about 500 bucks. You can get yourself a heat press, which is about 200 bucks, and start um, sublimating designs on t shirts and um, also aprons, pillows, and things like that. So you can go as low as one, 500 to a thousand bucks. I mean, you can spend ten thousand dollars on an embroidery machine and start embroidering. Uh, you know, so much more product as well. Uh, or you can get a forge, a uh, glow forge, which is a, a laser cutter machine, and you can start engraving wood products and cutting out woods. Summer's coming up, so uh, crafts are a big thing for camps and families that are doing little animal crafts, and so you can be cutting those out with a laser uh, cut out machine. So, so you can go anywhere from, you know, 500, 1,000 to 5,000 dollars for like a laser cutter. You guys, be sure to check out our podcast where we interview successful business owners just like Vlad, and it's simple is going to www.upflip.com forward slash podcast. Yeah, and over here we oh, have our cool. laser machine. This is a Boss laser. It engraves all of our buckles, all of our tags. We personalize all our products. So when people buy it on Etsy, it's personalized to each customer. So we made to order. We don't do anything by bulk. So when the order comes in, we engrave their buckle. We then strap after. So this starts from here, and then it starts to move its way uh, okay. throughout the shop. And then let me show you my straps, uh, strap machines up there. Uh, we sew all of our straps upstairs, and uh, we don't want uh, too much of uh, straps that are not being sold and only have what is being sold uh, in our inventory. So, okay. yeah, so this is my, my fancy budget-friendly office. This is where I <laughs> do my business. But anyway, oh, so man. we have it. our uh, sewing machines over here and uh, these are our strap machines. This is a basically a two needle sewing machine. So it sews the strap with uh, two needles at once. So it, it's very, it makes the process very, very fast. So it used to take us to, uh, about two to five minutes to make a strap for the dog collar. Now we make a big roll within like minutes. So it's, it's like it definitely increased our process. And then here's our uh, shelf of all of our designs that we have. This is where we basically cut and get it ready to be sold for the final process. Awesome, this is incredible. 
guys, before I decided to protect my house with Simply Safe, this was my sad excuse for my home security system. And it kind of worked, but not as well as my Simply Safe home security system that was a breeze to install. The Simply Safe home security system offers amazing features like entry sensor, motion sensor, glass breaking sensor, panic button with easy to follow installation instructions simply safe even offers professional monitoring simply safe is offering upflip viewers 20 percent off on your home security system plan when you sign up with the simply safe interactive monitoring plan and your first month will be free click the link in the description below or scan the qr code on the screen to learn more give me that oh, oh come on <laughs> So what are the most productive uh, marketing strategies that you use for Etsy? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think the, the most important thing is, uh, and I say this all the time, is satisfy the keywords, right? Essentially, a customer is coming to Etsy, they're trying to buy something specific, right? Let's say they're buying a t-shirt and they're saying, I want a t-shirt that says, um, you know, graduation is coming up and they're saying, graduation mom, 2022, right? They're very specific and she types in, like maybe at the end saying floral design. So if you design a t-shirt that literally says that, that, graduation mom 2022 with floral designs on it then she's like perfect that's exactly what I wanted so really satisfying the keywords as close as possible is going to be your best bet because that means you're going to rank better on those keywords because you've satisfied that keyword better than anybody else so the best marketing strategy is to find a way where you can be in charge of the design of your product okay which means manufacture or production is essential that's why I decided to make my own dog collars instead of buying them from China because I can research the key Keyword, where's their big traffic and then come as close as possible to that keyword as I can and how much do you typically spend a month on advertisements and what is your ROI it's about 10 to 15 percent of, okay. of my overall sales I uh -huh. spend on advertisements sometimes more sometimes actually less and so it's about seven to nine thousand per month is how much I spend on advertising now if you're you're obviously you can be a fraction of that it's, it's all about percentage also if you have better photos that improves your conversion oh rates. that's good thank you so much for sharing that How do you build brand awareness when you first started your tag pup company? And if you could just share some strategies when you first started, how to get those first customers in? Yeah, so in terms of brand awareness, in the beginning, you really want to focus on algorithm. You want to grow an algorithm. Nobody really knows who you are, and that's totally fine, right? So because they're going to start recognizing you as they are typing into the search engine, and then they're finding a product, not a shop, a product that they like, and they buy the product. And then after they bought the product, they got a chance to interact with the product, they two things will happen right it, well three things if they don't like it then you're, it, it's not gonna be good for you <laughs> yeah, but if yeah. they do like it two things will happen one is to come back and buy another product from you so a return customer is a cheap customer which means you don't pay money for them they they buy more product than you didn't spend on advertisement and the, the second thing that will happen is they'll tell their friends about it so if they have other dogs and they're like oh where'd you get that adorable dog collar and I was like, oh it's a store on Etsy called tag pop you should check them out right so they've referenced to your product now if you're selling a generic product that doesn't have any emotional response, they might just say, well, I bought it on Etsy. But you want to really elevate that emotional response to make it an amazing product. One, it looks good. Two, it's good quality. If you can have that spark that emotions when mm -hmm. they got that product, that's when you can have that brand recognition and that uh, return customer coming back. Vlad, do you use Etsy ad campaigns? And if you do, what are some tips that you can share with us in, in terms of budgeting? Yeah, I think Etsy ads are, are largely undervalued by sellers on Etsy. But if you do your product research correctly, if you figure out a product that actually works on the market, when you run Etsy ads, that will be the reason why your store is going to skyrocket. And I teach this all the time on my YouTube channel about how to run Etsy ads. And if you can get the Etsy ads down, it's gonna set you from the rest of the shops and that's how you can become a top 1% store is if you keep pushing your uh, your items to the top as much as you can because what Etsy ads do is they split your listing or they duplicate your listing so now you have let's say you had 10 products well if you advertise all of them now you have 20 okay and do you advertise on a weekly basis on a monthly oh, basis? I, I, I let them run all the time I put the max as I as much as I can what is the max uh, well <laughs> they actually only let you do $1,000 okay. a day uh -huh. to spend and they never 
spend that because uh-huh. they only spend whatever people are willing to click. Oh, okay. Uh, during Christmas time, there's a larger uh, volume of uh, visitors, yeah. and so. Uh, there's, there's, t- you spend more, but when you during the weekdays, because the, there's not enough uh, traffic, Etsy tries to be uh, a lot more fair to other shops, so it doesn't just let your be spent all the time. But I would recommend if you did your pre product research correctly to run ads as much as you can. Awesome. So what are some of the must-have equipment that you use that you'd recommend for people starting off as you're watching this video? Yeah, well, so, so the thing about Etsy is that you don't need to have crazy equipment. Like, I started off from a plastic sewing machine. I actually went to Walmart and oh, I picked man. up their last sewing machine. That's and this awesome. was like right before COVID hit. So everybody bought out a bunch of um, a bunch of sewing machine. I got the last one for a hundred bucks. And I pretty much had to learn how to sew all from scratch from YouTube, you know. And so you, you don't need that much for, um, for equipment and then went to Joann's to got some fabric, learn how to sew dog bandanas and then everything else after that followed. Oh man, that's incredible. So you're telling me that you started off from a hundred dollar sewing machine exactly. at Walmart. Exactly. And n- not knowing how to sew at all, exactly. you just went to YouTube and started all this. And, and I don't even have a dog. So that tells you that <laughs> like anybody can start, Oh man. you know, and so somebody can go to Joann's and pick up a, a, a circuit cutter or cricket cutter and um, start, you know, applying personalization to like champagne glasses and the uh, cricket cutter costs like 200 bucks. Wow. I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit to where you can start and any normal person or any basic, you know, stay at home mom, stay at home dad can start the Nancy business without much uh, upfront cost. So you said you started from your bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So let's say someone does not have the space to store all their supplies. How would you recommend, suggest where they go to purchase the stuff? Yeah, so I, I still bought the buckles initially from China already. They, they allow you to, there's sometimes manufacturers, their minimum requirement is, is still small and, and you, you pay a lot more per unit, but you can still buy a smaller quantity. Uh, but you can also go, like I said, Amazon and start buying uh, buckles and components that, or, or whatever you need for your stuff. As far, as far as fabric, I did it from Joann's. That's where I got for the fabric. I would literally go to Joann's down the aisle and start looking for whatever looks good to use for my dog bandanas and collars and things like that. That's awesome. Can you give us some samples? Can we go there today? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's, let's go. go. Let me show you around. All right, guys, let's go inside and I'll show you exactly what, you, what I did when I would need to buy fabric. And uh, I'll show you some ideas that you can do uh, if you do want to start an Etsy shop and you only have 500 bucks, some of the stuff you can get from Joann's, uh, you'd be surprised. So let's come, come on in, uh, come on inside. All right, so when I come in here, what I would look for is, let's say I want to do like a dog uh, theme, dog collar or, or a bandana. I would uh, kind of see the keywords. Okay, I could see dog collars, uh, pet paws or something like that, uh, buffalo plaid and paw, you know. So I kind of would find something that I think looks good and would do well on the market. And usually the things when you, if you are doing fabric or you are selling a fabric based product, you want to make sure that the, that the keyword that you're targeting, that the design is very visibly and uh, can vibrantly displayed on what you're going to do. So let's say if we're going to do bumblebee, you do want to make sure you see a bumblebee, not like, you know, you sew it and you can see a half of a bumblebee and the little guy is on the main page, but make sure that when you take a photo that, you know, that bigger bumblebee is showing or say a cat unicorn, you know, uh, and these are the things I would look for uh, before coming to Joanne's and see if I can match a, a fabric to that. And what I would do also when I would buy something from Joanne's, I would look at their website because if you run, if they run out of inventory here and sometimes they might not have enough, you want to check on their uh, website and see if they have some more inventory on their website so that way when you when you run out you go ahead and re- replenish that inventory and you have a way to do that on the Etsy shop I mean how does your business the tag pop stand out from the other shops out on so there? so yeah that's actually a good question and that's the, the the trick about why I decided to print my own fabric because when other shops they either buy large bulk of uh, a dog collar, but they have a few different selections of dog collars because they buy it from China and then they personalize it, which means they don't have a large selection because they they have to buy it by large bulks. Uh-huh. Or there's shops that buy their fabric from Joann's and they have a large selection, but they'll sell out of a particular design because Joann's will no longer carry that fabric. Whereas for me, I can have a large selection and an endless amount of supply. So that allows for people to keep coming back to our shop knowing we will have always new designs 
signs. So if Christmas comes around, we're selling Santa dog collars, we're selling you know reef dog collars, uh, St. Patrick's Day, you name it. So we're we're able to be so much more flexible than any other shop, which gives us the edge in the ranking because we can satisfy the keywords that are hot at that time. Oh, awesome. So, so roughly, how many? products do you have? I mean, uh, we have, uh, we have close to uh, 100 different designs wow. of dog collars alone. Wow, so, that is yeah. incredible. And, and the nice thing is I don't have to have the inventory. So I print if it sells. Wow. All right, so what are great key components for listing your product on Etsy? I mean, your photos and your listings, your wordings. Because on Etsy, in large, you're selling a want-based product. You're not selling screwdrivers, you're not selling you know, nail guns. You're selling something that they don't have to have. It's something they want to have. Uh -huh. And so when you're selling something they want to have, emotional connection has to be the, the priority, right? So photos are the number one things that do that. So when you're buying a spoon, you don't just buy a regular spoon, you buy a rose gold spoon. Because you have spoons, but you want it to add a little something to it. So photos are essential. It is the number one thing that we as uh, want-based product sellers need to focus on is create the atmosphere, right? Like a tablecloth. You don't just put a, a cloth on a table and take a photo, but you got to make them feel like this uh, cloth is the finest linens of Germany with like, you know, you want to tell a story and so that that sparks an emotion. Like I want to be there. And so you want to drag them in with photos. So I think photos are largely undervalued. Yep. And the second thing that is most important is the tags and title. Those I kind of use those in parallel because when you're selling a, a particular product, like for example, if we're selling the pink hearts, right? The pink hearts, we're selling that collar. I need to make sure that when people type in pink hearts, that my listing pops up. How does it pop up? Well, there's the word pink hearts dog collar found in my listing, right? So when I am doing keyword research, those are the words I wanna look for. And if I find that there's a lot of traffic going to the pink hearts dog collar, well, that's exactly what I'm gonna design and create the listing for. And I'm gonna include that keyword in the tags and the title so that that way I rank on the proper or appropriate keywords with an appropriate product. You essentially want to satisfy the keywords that people are searching into the search engine. So what is your greatest expense? Uh, well, that, that would actually be leasing the equipment, even though we own half of our equipment because I saved up and bought it, but we uh, lease the other half. And so it's a two-year lease, which means in two years we've owned our equipment, but we started at least a uh, two-year lease period about a year ago, well, a year and a half ago. So okay. we're coming up to paying it all off completely. Nice. So it's, it's going to be really nice that, that we don't so have cool. to pay that. But our second largest one is the buckles because okay. we buy them from China. And the biggest expense of that is actually shipping. Nice. So because they're so heavy, and so that would, that would be our biggest expense. So once your lease is paid for, are you guys gonna celebrate? Uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll do something. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> So what are the key components to an excellent storefront? Yeah, I would say visuals are gonna be the top priority. So do you present yourself as the one that knows this niche or are an expert in this area? So if you are selling leather wallets or leather anything, they looking at your, your storefront, they say, wow, this guy must be spending years studying sewing the leather, right? So you have to present yourself visually as the authority in this space. So, and, and the second thing is create your store in a niche mindset. For example, let's just say you go to Target Target and you want to buy yourself uh, uh, or you want to buy some gift wrapping paper. Yeah. Well, in that gift wrapping paper, there's going to be tape, there's going to be little bow ties, there's going to be gift wrapping. So it's, it creates a, an experience where I'm going to get everything I need in this aisle. So with a storefront, you want to think the same way. You want to think in terms of aisle or create an aisle experience. So if I'm selling dog collars, well, they also can buy a, uh, a bandana, they can buy a tag. Or if I'm selling whatever, you want to make sure that you create to where it's a stop it's all in one shop. Now, you don't want to you don't want to have a general store where it's just everything, right? You're selling mugs, you're selling t-shirts, you're selling uh, crochet needles and, it's, and so on and so on. You want to make sure that you sell something niched, but creating that aisle experience where there's more than just one product. So I think that would be a very big one because that reduces how much money you spend on advertisement because they can buy more than one product. 
All right, so this is the fan blitz. We get to All ask right, you a do number of questions and you just pound through them as fast as you can. All right, let's do it. All right, Matt W is asking, how do you do product research? How do you find good niches in areas that seem to be competitive? Yeah, so I use E-Rank was one of them. The other one is Etsy. You want to find other sellers that are doing really well with that product. You got to figure out why and pretty much replicate it. Bam, awesome. Yellow Boat is asking, what were some of the challenges you had in the very beginning of your daily operation of your business and how and who helped you work through them? Uh, I think the first one is learning the machine. And my mom, my grandma, and my aunt. Jason is asking, how did you get noticed on Etsy when starting out? And did most of your business come from Etsy ads or organic researches? So most of my sales begin with Etsy ads because you pretty much not notice that Etsy ads help you push to the top. And over time, my organic start to grow. And now I'm getting more sales from more organic than from my advertisement. Excellent. Fi Forte is asking, is it worth paying on the Etsy's fees? Are you getting most of your customers because of Etsy? Oh yeah, I think Etsy is a great marketplace. Etsy spends a lot of money finding people that want to buy want-based products, and those are the, some of the most expensive traffic to get. And so that's why Etsy does tra uh, charge for the fee because it takes it takes a lot to find somebody that get, that has the money to spend on a want-based yeah. product, especially during this economy. Especially, so they're a good help for you. Yeah. What was your favorite business book? Uh, I think the number one book, and I always say this, e is E Myth. E Myth is like an amazing book. It's a, a, a guy that understands the complicated business concepts and is explaining it to a pie maker, a lady who likes to make pies, how to run a business. And so I think I would recommend that hands down to anybody. That's awesome. How many times did you read that book? Uh, I listened to it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. A few times. Yeah. yeah. Guys, by the way, we are giving away that book. So a lucky winner will get that book. All you got to do is just comment below. What? So what kind of software do you use to track your sales or is that something built in through your Etsy store? Yeah, it it's actually is built in through your Etsy store. You can use uh, you know, third-party applications, but Etsy has a really great dashboard where it shows your conversion rate. Uh, are you increasing in sales? Are you improving your conversion rate? And I really lo I love using that because when I, especially when I launch a product, I want to keep an eye. Is it growing organically? And the more money I'm spending on advertisement or am I just going to keep spending a lot of advertisement and it's just not growing organically? I want to know that ahead of time in order to understand, should I keep investing into advertisement or not? So Etsy has a great, great platform to, uh, to um, see what your, what your products are doing on the market, essentially. Okay, so you're saying growing organically. Is there a way something can grow not organically? Yeah, so if the profit margins are great with advertisement, I continue to invest, I continue to spend money on advertisement, which means that the advertisement listing will continue to grow in uh, on the algorithm as well as the organic one. So sometimes the organic one is above the a paid advertisement, sometimes it's the other way around. Depending on your profit margins, if you're happy with them, you keep advertisement. If you're not, you know, you might want to pause the advertisement. What is the greatest struggle that you're going through right now and how is that affecting your business and what are you doing about it? Yeah, I, that's a good question. So right now I'm dealing with cash flow. That's a big one and I'm not good at organizing and, and math problems and, and you know budgeting and all that stuff. So cash flow has been something I've been really learning and m as much as I can. Buying the inventory on time so that we don't run out of things and but having the money to do that is really um, the, the, the struggle. So you might have a lot of money come in but if you don't manage it appropriately, you're going to run out of it, and then you're like, oh wait, I need money to buy more inventory of this. Yeah. I forgot that we needed more transfer paper or more thread. We're running out of thread because you have employees. You yeah. have to have everything in stock. You have to, when they come into work, they got to know that they got work to do. But if you yeah. don't have inventory, you know, you can't do that. So keeping that consistent um, has been really difficult, and that has been impacting us in, in the way that I can't scale as fast as I would like to. In the beginning, we start scaling really fast. First calendar year, year we did three quarters of a million. And we're like, this is great. But after that, we started to plateau because, not plateau, we still grow in a little bit, but it's because of that cash flow, because of that inventory that kind of slowed us down. And so I'm trying to get past that. Once I get past that, we're hoping to see more growth. Now tell me about the standard procedures, how you operate your business. What do you do? How do you do it? How do you manage all this? Yeah, so I'm a big believer. I really love how McDonald's does her, does her whole um, process thing. They, they have stations and they, they simplify each station as, as much as they possibly can. And taking that model, we, I try to apply here. So we start off from engraving the buckles, right? The buckles are engraved. The guy comes in in the morning. He engraves the buckles that are going to be part of the orders for that day. And I'm finishing the prints that we're going to then, then I press 
And then the, the lady in the morning, she finishes up all the straps. She sews the strap using the machines that we have up there. And then we bring the buckles that were engraved with the straps together. And then the, we use the CNC machine to put it together. And at the end of the day, we package. So it's a very simple, simple oh process. All right, so look at this, 164 bucks. You can literally get this and start sewing right away. So it's not that expensive to get in. And, and Singers, they, they make good, fairly good sewing machine. You can go up, up to $249. So it really is not that expensive to get started on a sewing machine. But I can show you other ideas that you can do if you want to start from Etsy. So check this out. Um, if you want to get a Cricut cutter, you get this Cricut cutter, you get some vinyl, and you go and get some champagne glasses and start personalizing them. It's really, you can check it out on Etsy. They sell really well and they buy more than one because they have several different bridesmaids and you can literally start uh, selling on Etsy for almost no money in all way. Say 500 bucks, I really mean 500 bucks. You don't have to buy a lot you can stop by either walmart or go on amazon and buy the little inventory like a blank you know apron blank t-shirt blank you know mugs cups whatever so but it's about doing the keyword research see what sells and see how you can apply this machine to that um so uh to that product so if you're selling say bridesmaids cups or mugs or t-shirts or aprons bridesmaid aprons sell really nice you can also do that with this machine as well all right so hopefully that was helpful what you can get from joanne's but let's head down back to the shop All right, so you said you started in your bedroom. I yeah. mean, so how did you scale from a bedroom all the way to this business? So yeah, when I started sewing the dog collars or, or bandanas, dog bandanas, I also kept in mind, how can I make this trap faster? How can I do it so that um, I, instead of taking five minutes, I can do one minute or two minutes? Now we make straps that takes us for, for each collar, the, the amount of time it takes us to sew the strap, it takes like five seconds because oh, the, wow. the process is so automated. So it's all about how can you improve the process? If you can improve the process, you can reduce your price. And if you can reduce your price, you can improve your conversion rate, thus increasing your sales. It's, it's that simple. So, um, well, it's simple, but it's not easy. <laughs> so I'm trying to improve my process and I use duct tape and uh, I went to Home Depot, got the aluminum sheets and I bent them to create attachments to my sewing machine. So I, I created attachments to, to make the sewing much faster and smoother. And as I was improving the process, I started to learn about sewing and how, how China does it. I was looking uh, all over the internet to see how does China sew dog collars? And there's not much content out there for dog collars. And so then I came across a CNC machine. It's pretty much a machine that uh, sews the box stitch. And I'm like, perfect, that's gonna cut down on my production. And it, they, it cost about 10 thousand dollars to get one so we saved up and bought it and that improved my process and I was able to start hiring people to say okay you're gonna work on the CNC machine and because it's such an easy process uh, it was just literally a, a one to a foot click it gave me the ability to now focus on other things and that allowed me to start scaling with machinery and process and thus giving me more profit margins and reducing my cost for the product and, and beating out my competition on Etsy. What do you do to generate more positive reviews? And what are you doing with the negative ones? Yeah, um, actually, yeah. So reviews are, are critical on Etsy because if you think about it, the seller, the buyer is going on Etsy. The thing that they're going to be relying on is the reviews, what other people said about their product when they purchased it. So it is very important to make sure that you have good reviews. The way we do that is communicating well and improving your process to produce a quality product. Okay, so communicating so, well. How often are you on the reviews and getting back to the you know, customers? We're, uh, uh, I used to be a lot more than I am now. You know, in fact, one of the complaints recently was that the fabric was um, was uh, too thin and we're actually going to be in, uh, upgrading our fabric to something a little bit more firm and a little bit more uh, rigid um, and so that's going to be how I respond to that complaint that's awesome. um, but with complaints it's really important to listen to them it's it's really important to not overthrow them or like ignore them because critics telling you how to improve your product and you need to listen to that because that's valuable for you. And I have a system for our customer service gal. So we have it if, if it's their fault, uh, these are the options that we can do. And some of that means like, hey, we can actually fix it for a much cheaper price. Just send us the product back, just leave the buckle on there and we'll restrap if it's say a wrong size and we'll just tra charge them for the shipping and the strapping. But if it's if it's our fault, then obviously we'll just refund or or, or 
we make the color depending on what they want. If the issue is just they're just picky about the, the, the shade of the color, then we would ask them to ship it back to us. And oftentimes customers say, you know what, it's not that bad. So we kind of have a system on how we deal with complaints okay. and how the customer service gal has uh, response to that. We try to have a system in that as well. Awesome. So how many employees do you have and what are the starting wages? How do you find great employees or how do you train them? So that's a good question. I have about seven employees. Um, one of them is full-time. The other one, she used to be full-time. She went down to 30 hours and the other five, um, they are part-time. So, but as far as yeah, paying the employees, I actually invest a lot more into machines and letting the machines do as much work as possible. That way it's one, two buttons, you know, that's all they have to press. And that means they don't have to have a skill level that uh, becomes really expensive in, in, in nowadays. So you want to have a uh, machine up operators instead of skilled labor, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, so I'm trying to focus more on machine operators than skilled laborers. Yeah, absolutely. So the machines are doing the hard, the tough exactly. work. And anybody looking for a part-time job, whether in summer or winter, they can just come in, station set up, all you gotta do exactly. is one, two, and three kind of exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. What are the biggest reasons why Etsy shops fail and how can some of those mistakes be avoided? Yeah, so I think the first thing is because Etsy is a platform for uh, creatives or artisans, they're gonna bring their emotions to the market. So if they really love crocheting, if they, if they really love pottery and they bring their emotions to the market, they try to sell their craft and they find that it's not selling, uh, that could be a, a pretty devastating. Or you might have an opinion about Etsy saying, it's a, it's a big joke, I'm not gonna sell on it. But you gotta come to the market understanding, hey, what? how can I apply myself so uh, look at the market objectively and not emotionally and then bring emotions or a passion into your product so I don't even have a dog I didn't know how to sew right I have nothing I have no knowledge of sewing fabric but I realized that that's what the market demands and then I started to apply my knowledge of graphic design uh, to the product after it became uh, began to start picking up traction so it's it's uh, hold off on your passions for just a little bit uh, apply yourself to the market on what the market demands and then start bringing your passion into it and find ways to integrate it within your product to stand above the competition. Now, let's talk about profit margins. All right. What are they for you? What does it look like? Um, so there's a theoretical profit margins and then there's the practical one, right? Okay. Theoretically, we are 50% profit margins, right? But practically, we have leasing equipment where, where there's so many uh, things that we're developing and there's so many things that we're paying off and credit card, you know, and all that stuff we're paying off. So we're really close on budget, right? Okay. But theoretically, if everything is uh, paid for and we've taken care of all our um, expenses that, that, are, that are like loans and leases, okay. then it is 50%. And once we get to that, we'll plan to reinvest and keep growing. So. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So when you first started in your own bedroom, um, profit margins, I'm assuming they were closer to 70, 80 until um, you started accumulating more. Actually, it was even less than, so it was less because we're making more profit now because of the machines that they're doing a lot more work and faster. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, when you start off, your profit margins are smaller unless you charge an arm and a leg for your dog collar, okay. which a lot of people do because they don't have a process, they don't have a system. It takes them 30 minutes to make a dog collar and they will charge 50 to $60. So. Yeah, and vice versa, it takes you five seconds. Yeah, well, not five seconds, but it, right now it takes us about a minute and a half to two minutes to make a caller from start to finish. You guys, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and just hit that like button right now and we'll continue on with the video. And what other systems are you currently using that are helping you grow your business? Our fulfillment software that we use is called ShipStation. It's a really nice software that allows you to process orders, large quantity of orders. When we would have 10 to 20 uh, orders per day, we would use Etsy, and that worked fine for us. But once we're starting to get it to the 100 orders, 200 orders, you know, we, are, we then need to use something a little bit more beefy, and ShipStation allows us to fulfill orders by bulk. So mm -hmm. we can ship by bulk, we can you know, scan bulk, and so it, it gives a barcode which it lets the, the, the flow um, a, a, lot, a lot more efficiently. Are there any underserved niches on Etsy? So if somebody wants to start a shop, are there any good categories that you think that'd be very successful for them? You can pretty much start selling anything that has a large traffic. 
So you don't need necessarily need to focus on some kind of a niche. Now, there are some niches that I would love to go into that I don't have the time for. Uh, but I think children or kids, like uh, kid aprons, um, onesies, uh, pacifier clips, that's what my wife started to kind of dabble a little bit. And she's getting way too much orders and she's trying to do as least amount of work as possible because we have kiddos and so she's trying not to. But yeah, things like kids. And you can even uh, pick up like a Cricut cutter like I was talking about earlier and personalize the, um, the aprons that moms like to personalize for their kids to uh, when they're baking, when they're cooking. That's gonna be selling really well, especially during the summer. So there's so much you can do in the kids' space space um, that I would love to go in full heartedly, but uh, I just, I'm way too busy with pet products. But with kids, they grow fast, so which means um, if they have more than one kid at the time, they, they're always buying from your store, if you, especially if you have different age groups, uh, sizes for each age group. During Christmas time, you can do matching PJs, so there's so much you can do. And I haven't even begun talking about the wedding products, so. Oh man, Vlad, I love this so much. And I thank you for sharing your thoughts as a business owner of what someone can be doing right now. You just dropped a huge bomb for these people. So thank you so much for sharing yeah, that. No problem. What about social media? I mean, are you using Facebook, Instagram on anything? And if so, what are the best platforms and how do you, uh, how do you utilize that? Yeah, actually, uh, so there's, there's different approaches for Etsy. And I'm actually taking the approach where I don't use any social media. There's a lot of shops out there that use Pinterest and uh, Instagram, and they're really big on that. Uh, but I actually don't use any social media. I focus a lot more attention on the algorithm than the social media. Because when people come to Etsy, they already have the intention to buy. But they're, when they're watching on Instagram, they could be sitting, sitting on their toilet searching through Instagram. So they might not be ready to to purchase but if I can put all my attention onto the algorithm on a marketplace to on the people that are ready to buy I will have better results and sure enough that's what resulted in me getting better sales okay that's interesting so, but what about the person sitting on the toilet what yeah. if they're ready to buy if they're ready to buy it's the last thing it could be a tip for you in the future yeah. well and, and we've started growing our Instagram account and I I do my TikTok and all that stuff but uh, when I did start to grow I focus all of my attention on the algorithm that makes sense. on SEO and things like that awesome So TagPub is top 1% of all Etsy shops. Yep, yep. So how do you get those rankings and what can one do to get those rankings boosted? Yeah, well, so so I, I don't think it really benefits your store to be the top 1%. When you go on E-Rank, E-Rank is a uh, so software that's a third party application that okay. gives you uh, data about the market and it'll give you that 1% thing, uh, which is kind of, it's a good feeling, but it doesn't help you with the market. And so currently we are the number one pet product in terms of daily sales, so which is a cool thing, but we're not the number one pet product store because somebody sold 100,000 orders where we've only done 80,000, but they've existed for like five years, whereas we only existed for two years. So they only look at like how much you made overall. And so, uh, but it does, it does feel great though to be the top 1% store. I'm sure so. it is, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so when do you think you will be top one or like the one? For, for pet products or everything? Yes. Well, uh, pet products, I think next year will, will probably be the, the awesome. number one in terms of overall sales. But so yeah, we'll see. Is there anything you wish you knew before you started your business, either about Etsy or just in general of business ownership? What comes to mind is I wish I hired photographers earlier on, and I think instead of spending time on taking photos, I should have spent time on production and other things like SEO, and uh, so I wish I, I hired photographers earlier on. Okay. Because they're, they're not that expensive, especially if you're gonna have them uh, do a, a photo of your product, you can literally mail that to them and they can use their environment to take a photo oh, and great. edit all that because they have all the tools and the process to do that. So. That's awesome, because I was gonna ask you, like, do they come here or do you, so you mail it to them? Yeah, I mean, you can mail it to them um, or you can just uh, meet up with them and then is you can find a local photographer. Is it pretty inexpensive? Yeah, well, like recently I had a photo shoot. I spent, I paid them a hundred bucks, 150 with tip. And she took a photo of like, like six different colors. Now that's that's a that's a perfect case scenario, but it's within that range. Okay. 
All right, so what skills did you draw prior to coming in, into Tag Pub? I think the first one is the, the knowledge that the guys that I worked for have you know, bestowed upon me, right? They, they taught me everything uh, they know about Etsy and the manufacturing back end of it. So that really what helped me a lot when I came into the market. And the second one is graphic design. I'm a graphic designer, so I kind of know how to build a brand. Um, and I would also say uh, SEO. I uh, built websites before. I, I did some advertisement for, for companies. Um, designing their advertisements. So I understood the conversion rates or how to make it say, hey, if it's selling better when it's red or blue, and, and, and um, designing according to the conversion rates or con according to the data. So for example, if I'm selling this uh, watermelon dog collar, right? Mm -hmm. And when I'm selling the dog, watermelon dog collar, do I understand how much traffic looks for that? If, if the, there's a, a good amount of traffic looking for that, I want to make sure I title my uh, products accordingly in order to start showing up on top of those high um, traffic keywords and making sure that um, if I'm selling a black watermelon dog collar, well, I'm like the closest product to those keywords, right? And that's the nice thing about printing your own fabric is because you can really satisfy keywords a lot better than anybody else because you're literally designing to that keyword, which means you have a higher success rate to rank on a given keyword. What is your approach for providing excellent customer service skills on growing your e-commerce? The one thing, and I kind of touched a little bit about that, is creating a process for the customer service gal that does all our customer service. For example, if, like I said, if, if there's their fault, this is what they do. If it's our fault, this is what they do. And there's always like, like little grace moments in, throughout the whole process that um, they're always going to expect the same uh, answers. No matter uh, if they, let's say, the same person got the caller wrong twice, they will get the same response. So so there's kind of a process and it, it allows the customer service gal not to lose her mind over her job. She knows exactly how to process that. So I think having a consistency in the customer service is important, but uh, customer experience, again, you want to create a great product. You want to create a product that just, wow, people comment on it. So when you create something that when they're walking their dog and uh, so many people are commenting about on the dog collar, all of a sudden that creates a little bit more into, it puts a little bit more into your brand. And so that customer experience there, they come back and they'll email us or they'll They'll, yeah. they'll uh, on, on Instagram say everybody's commenting on the caller. Thank you so much. You know, Stella loves oh, it. You know, that's so, awesome. so that's kind of I would say have a good process on customer service, but ultimately have a great product. You guys, be sure to watch our previous video with the owner of Black Sunflower. She's a successful business owner who is in the candle making business. You guys, thank you so much for taking your time and watching this episode. I hope you sure enjoy this as Vlad has took a step by step of his Etsy shop that you can start today. And before you go, please hit that like button. Button. Have a great day.